You open your email and there it is. A notice from your boss that your company has just been served with a writ of garnishment on your wages. What do you do now? Hi, I'm Jonathan Alper and I'm an asset protection attorney in Orlando, Florida. Wage garnishment is one of the most powerful and effective collection tools that you'll be facing if there's a judgment against you. Here's how it works. Once a creditor serves a wage garnishment on your employer, that wage garnishment is going to give to the creditor up to 25% of your wages. People ask, well, how long does the garnishment last? And the answer is, garnishments are forever. They will last until you have finished repaying the debt or you retire. One garnishment continues and forever until the debt is repaid. However, in Florida, there are some protections against wage garnishment. The first protection is what is known as the head of household exemption. Under Florida statutes, if you're head of household, your wages are exempt from garnishment. And the exemption is unlimited. I'm often asked, there must be some limit on this exemption. And the answer is no. If you're a rock star, if you are in the NBA, none of your wages can be garnished if you're head of household. So who's head of household? Head of household is a concept that the courts have defined. And the courts have said essentially that a head of household is an individual, a debtor, who provides more than 50% of the support for some other person for whom the debtor has either a legal or at least a moral obligation. The person you support is often a spouse or a child and also often is a minor child living in your home. But technically, the person supported does not have to live with you as long as you provide more than 50% of the support. So, how do you exert this head of household protection? Is there something you have to file in advance of a judgment? And the answer is no. There is nothing to file now that will protect you when a garnishment comes your way. Here's how it works. When your wages are garnished, you'll receive a form and on the back of the form, there'll be an exemption list where you can assert that you are exempt from wage garnishment for any reason, but specifically today, the head of household exemption. So you check the box and then you send back the form to the creditor and also file it with the court. And then you have to wait until the creditor schedules a hearing or the court schedules a hearing. Well, good luck with that you may be waiting a long time. The more assertive way to get rid of a wage garnishment is to file a motion with the court to dissolve the garnishment because you are head of household and demand an expedited hearing so you can get your day in court before the judge and get this garnishment done with. One, th one mistake a lot of people make are the small business people, small business owners, who get a salary from the, own, the business that they own and control. And unfortunately, our courts in many cases have said that a small business owner cannot benefit from the wage, uh, head of household exemption from wage garnishment because the courts have said that if you control the amount of wages and frequency of wages from your own business, that is really not salary or wages that can be placed under the umbrella of the head of household exemption. Is that fair? No, it's not fair. And hopefully the courts someday will reverse that way of looking at the small business owner. But be aware, that's the law. And if you're a small business owner, be, be very careful about, about depending on a head of household exemption from wages from your own business. So what happens if you're not head of household? Well, there's still answers. First of all, even if you're not head of a household, the federal government limits the amount of wages that can be garnished from you. The National Consumer Act states that a creditor can garnish to get a judgment only 25% of your after-tax take-home wages. However, if the garnishment is for alimony, that number goes up to 50%. So combining alimony or wage garnishment and alimony, your ceiling then will go up to 50% if alimony is involved. Secondly, another way to protect yourself against wage garnishment if you're not head of household 
is to examine the technicalities and procedures that the garnish, garnishment followed. Because wage garnishment statutes are very, very precise. And sta these statutes and procedures are very tightly controlled by the court. So it, many times a wage garnishment will make a small error in the garnishment procedure. And if he does, you through your attorney can object and get the garnishment released on technical grounds. So what do you do? I recommend that you go to an attorney who is experienced with wage garnishments, see if you qualify for head of household. If you do, get an expedited hearing, file a motion to dissolve the garnishment. And if you don't qualify for head of household, have the attorney closely examine the garnishment procedures to see if he can find grounds to overturn the garnishment. My name is Jonathan Alper. My telephone number is 407-444-0404. If you suffer a wage garnishment, give me a call. I'll point you in the right direction. I'm here to help. And thanks for watching today.